Hi, I'm Fran Foster of Setucket Lodge in East Bridgewater. Welcome to our 18th show in a continuing series of what it means to be a Mason. Tonight we have as our guest Brother Carl Landerholm, who is the first vice president of the New England Grotto Association. And tonight we'll be talking about the grotto. Uh, Carl, when I was young, uh, well, which is last year maybe, <laughs> uh, I can always remember as a team of lay going down to the grotto, uh, the Shedad Grotto down on Perkins Avenue, a fine old mansion. They had a dance floor, they had a bowling alley, but I never knew what the grotto was. Can you tell us somewhat uh, of what the grotto is and what they do? I would be pleased to tell you what Grotto is. It's a, an organization that is comprised of Masons, though we are only affiliated with the Masonic fraternity. Mm -hmm. We are not part of. You cannot be a member of Grotto unless you are a Master Mason. Mm -hmm. The uh, local organization uh, is Shedad Grotto, and Shedad is uh, boasting of more than a 75-year history of uh, service through uh, Sympathy and good fellowship. Those are key phrases and very important words that we uh, like to express. What that means to uh, all of our brothers mm -hmm. is that uh, we have an opportunity to uh, have fun, frolic, if you will, and still treat the uh, Masonic fraternity with the uh, respect that we uh, so cherish for our fraternity. Uh, all right, we, it is connected to them with masonry. And what is its purpose? As you said, it's fun. Uh, well, it's, its purpose is beyond uh, being just fun. It's the good fellowship that develops through uh, the handshake of a friend and a brother. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the purpose of uh, our existence is charity. Uh, that charity is uh, directed most particularly at uh, children. Uh, we have dentistry for the handicap, and that's any handicapped child, uh, whether it be a, uh, a muscular dystrophy or a cerebral palsy. Uh, we are very intent on uh, helping those who do not have the opportunity financially to help themselves. But it doesn't have to be the family of a mason either. Oh, absolutely not. It's anybody. Like the, like the Shriners, they take in anybody. Anybody at all. And, 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 and uh, all comers. It's the uh, devices for handicap that uh, we also have the capacity to uh, wish to help in uh, a simple application. Now, I, I've heard talk of the Crotchet Mountain uh, Center for Children. Are you involved with that in any way? That is the, uh, the handicapped child okay. uh, that uh, needs assistance, and yes, we are, to answer your question. Okay. Uh, any child that the parents have difficulty in uh, simple application to our uh, general offices. Supreme Council is what is referred to as our general offices. They're in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, an application to them, uh, ex requesting an application from them, would in fact give the uh, recipient the opportunity to participate in the program. And uh, that's the whole purpose, that uh, beyond having good fellowship, fun and frolic. Uh, our existence, uh, it's supported by the Enchanted Lantern. Uh, that Enchanted Lantern is meant to be the symbol of uh, our desire to help. And uh, when you see an Enchanted Lantern on a fez, as you see these fezes in front of you. The funny looking hats. The <laughs> in the best sense of the word, the funny looking hat. Uh, that's a badge of a uh, member of Grotto. Mm -hmm. And it's a proud symbol of a prophet's uh, attempt to help society and not just be a taker. There's a parable uh, that might be apropos to uh, enlighten you mm -hmm. a bit. I, I believe it goes, uh, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envies not. Rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. And now abide a faith, hope, and charity. The greatest of these is charity. Well, it's on that basis that we uh, look to all our tomorrows. Uh, we feel very strongly that uh, we can bond all the Blue Lodges together 
through a uh, fun happening with all our, always participating with our wives, a uh, multitude of things, whether it's a dinner or a dance. Mm -hmm. um, it's generally run with the intent to raise funds for an enchanted lantern. And each lantern that's uh, purchased goes to the foundation, the humanitarian foundation. And uh, that's managed out of the Supreme Office and uh, managed quite well because it's grown over the years through the uh, efforts of some very, very capable master basins, mm -hmm. but most particularly uh, past Grand Monarchs. And that foundation is the basis of how we can support and supply and, and be a help to mankind. Uh, we, we mentioned the funny looking hats here. <laughs> I see one with a, with a red tassel on it and another with a purple tassel. Uh, can you explain the difference between the two of them? Oh, I'd be pleased to. The red tassel denotes a prophet. That's the title that's given to uh, any master mason that has joined, goes through a ritualistic rite, of which the fez is part of his badge of courage. Mm -hmm. And denoting the, the beauty of the red tassel is the many that we are. As you rise in your responsibilities, uh, being a past monarch, you attain purple. And that's the other uh, decorated helmet, if you will. But that fez is a uh, badge of responsibility, and it's a very proudly worn uh, symbol of our, 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 our organization. So you are, you are then a past, past monarch? Of of Shidad Grotto. Shidad Grotto. Yes. And I would say a monarch is probably equal to a master of, of a blue exactly. lodge. Yes. He's the leader of mm -hmm. the particular grotto. Yes. How did this begin and how did it start? Uh, can you? Well, it started in Hamilton, New York in uh, 1890 when a, a master of uh, the Hamilton Lodge, uh, F and AM, in uh, Hamilton, New York. That's upstate, um, between uh, Syracuse and Rochester, mm -hmm. halfway between. Uh, 1890 was uh, the inception of how he wanted to uh, draw other Blue Lodges into fun and frolic and still honor the traditions that uh, we are so proud to uh, maintain and to have the participation of the wives when, in fact, obviously they don't participate in the Blue Lodge happenings uh, on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. uh, Grotto meets uh, on a monthly basis and uh, runs affairs sometimes twice a month, could be once a month, depends on the, uh, the weather and the happening. But back in 1890, uh, a name was chosen of M-O-V-P-E-R. And what that represented was Mystic Order of the Veiled Prophets of the enchanted realm. And it was to denote a, uh, a unique organization whose purpose was sympathy and good fellowship. I, I've seen that mob purr and I always <laughs> wondered what it was. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it too is recognition of uh, our affiliation. Okay. Uh, and what is the formal name of the, gr of the grotto? Well, oh, it's that's a Mr. Grotto yeah. of the Veiled Prophets, right. Well, beyond that, the, uh, the national body is called the Supreme Council okay. of the Grottos of North America, Mystic Order of Veiled Prophets of the Enchanted Realm. Mm -hmm. And that national organization is the catalyst that uh, supports the regional uh, associations. As in the case of New England, we have uh, the New England Grotto Association, which is comprised of nine grottos in uh, Rhode Island, Massachusetts. <coughs> and there are others in New York State called Empire State Grotto. Uh, the seven districts uh, comprise the national. And they have a convention once a year, and it's always in June, uh, generally a different place. Uh, we have a convention as uh, New England Grotto in September, at which time I'll become president Excellent. of New England. Excellent. And we intend to hold that down in New Bedford. Uh, it's a three-day affair. And we look forward to meeting all of the members from the other grottos 
and uh, the associations travel to an association uh, installation. So it's a time for good fellowship. Was that its original name, the, the, uh, the Grottos Association, or did it have another name? I think I heard somewhere that it might have had another name to begin with. Well, it did have another name to begin with, uh, and it was uh, a bit of a tricky name. Uh, it was named after the original uh, concept. It, it was Fairchild, mm -hmm. and uh, that literally came about in uh, 1874 and uh, moved from that name to the current name. And it, it is literally a name of honor. Uh, the, the current name, when, when, did you, when did that come about? Uh, 1890. Oh, in 1890? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, is there ritual involved in this, uh, in, the, in the meetings? There is a structure to it. It's not in the same sense of what we are uh, responsible for in Blue Lodge. However, that structure is, uh, is probably the most enchanting uh, installation of uh, profits that you would uh, participate. It's very colorful mm -hmm. and uh, unique. So yes, there is ritual, but uh, not likened to what we uh, are used to in Blue Lodge. Uh, is there some sort of a, a philosophy or a, a basic idea involved with this? There is a philosophy, and uh, it's the recitation of the word good fellowship. It allows the, uh, the charities that I referenced earlier mm -hmm. to uh, be focused upon. And that philosophy is to develop uh, friendship, sympathy, and good fellowship. And those are key words to our uh, existence in that, as I alluded to earlier, uh, you can be brass and loud and clanging, and without charity, you really have lost the picture. Uh, this keeps its focus, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm very proud to be part of the organization. Good. I see you have some pictures here. Uh, uh. The uh, diploma uh, that uh, is uh, yeah, on your right-hand side is that of the Enchanted Lantern, a diploma thereof. Uh, signifying that you have uh, participated in uh, presenting. All right, that's, that's what each person that's uh, every time is a, given? Uh, yeah, that's correct. Every time an Enchanted Lantern is purchased by an individual, it's acknowledged by the Supreme Council Humanitarian Fund. Uh -huh. Very nice. And then you have... The other document yeah. is one that shows the structure of masonry in general. Uh, we being affiliated directly with uh, Blue Lodge Master Masons, not in the Blue Lodge. Mm -hmm. However, the, uh, you can go directly into uh, Grotto from Blue Lodge, where in the case of the Shrine, you must participate in the uh, appendant bodies, either Scottish or York Rite, one or the other. But and from a Blue Lodge, you can go right into the, into right grotto. Into the grotto. You know, right. there's not a... a, a an intermediate step. That's correct. That's correct. So I brought that along just to uh, indicate that there is structure to how mm -hmm. we uh, arrive at a portal, if you will. Okay. Uh, you, you mentioned something about the profit sponsoring of charities. Uh, what are the, the various charities that they do sponsor? Well, the Humanitarian Fund is uh, one that is closest to the heart of uh, all profits in that it uh, does allow us to uh, develop a, uh, an income for supporting dentistry for the handicapped, appliances for the handicapped, whether it be cerebral palsy or uh, muscular dystrophy. Uh, they are very close to the hearts of uh, the membership. Uh, Bila Grotto out in uh, Springfield has participated uh, with a couple of local families who needed a wheelchair and a ramp to get into their home for the child. Mm -hmm. And uh, the membership not only donated the, uh, the material, but the effort to get a result. That's just one example. Uh, the uh, hearing impaired uh, is an example that we look to wanting to help 
out of the New England Grotto Association. Mm -hmm. That's supporting uh, Aletheia Grotto, which is out of uh, Worcester. And, uh, those are important ingredients. That's the style that we like to uh, present. So there is a philosophy. There is a charity. And the money is uh, used at its best. And it's money. Now, where did they get the name Grotto? Uh, how did that come about? Well, again, the, uh, the desire to, of uh, the worshipful master, Fairchild, wanted to denote a, uh, a unique gathering of not clandestine Masons, because we're not clandestine, but that gathering uh, was not necessarily held in a Blue Lodge. And uh, the name developed, whether it was a rock grotto or a, uh, a place where they could sit and have a picnic and laugh and enjoy their uh, time together. Mm -hmm. And uh, grotto was the chosen name. And then it improved uh, to denote individual grottos. Uh, I'll example Moslem Grotto down in uh, Providence, Rhode Island, and Nimrod in Connecticut. Another grotto is Azab, that's down in Fall River. Chidad in Brockton, my dad in uh, Dedham, Taleb in Quincy. Uh, so they, they have different names then? Oh, absolutely. Each one has adopted a name that uh, is unique to the Fez, uh, unique to a degree of its ceremony. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's very interesting, very colorful, very enjoyable. Uh, and how often do you meet, and, and where do you meet now? I know, I know that the uh, Perkins Street building has been sold. Uh, I, I yeah, uh, we had purchased that. There's a bit of background briefly, because it meant a lot to uh, a lot of grotto members in uh, this area. It was purchased in 1952 from uh, George E. Keith Company. It was a shoe company. And it originally was their playground for the uh, workers of the shoe company. We purchased it, as I said, in 1952 and continued to flourish down there until 1989. From 1952 to 1989, our membership uh, in the prime years, uh, I've been a member since 1971, and in that era, it would be uh, very easy to have 400, 500, 600 people participating in an affair. And it was easy to support a large building like that. As time has dwindled its membership, uh, it was chosen to move away from that site. And uh, that was accomplished in 1989. Uh, it was sold, and that's the end of that story as far as the history of that mm -hmm. location. But the monies that were uh, raised for charity down there were extensive. And f there were more weddings and affairs that were always denoted as the walkover club. As I know. I, uh, that was the place to go. That was the place to go. Yep. And uh, the members supported that for uh, many, 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 many years. The desire to uh, move up to 279 Prospect Street was uh, one to consolidate our efforts so that we weren't spending money just to uh, heat a building mm -hmm. rather than to put the uh, raised funds to better use. And we have done that. We've done that. Well, the maintenance on that old building must have taken quite a bit of resources, too, didn't it? That was the unfortunate part. Yeah, because uh, it was old. That's correct. A good building, still a great building. Yeah. Still a great building. But the, uh, the history that it uh, denotes that there weren't many too, too many Masonic affairs that weren't held when the large numbers were uh, needed to be gathered that didn't take place down at that site. So mm -hmm. has a great history still. What would I get where, out of the grotto if I were to join? You would get fellowship. Okay. You would always have a genuine handshake, which you would get in a Blue Lodge, but you're able to uh, travel throughout the many Blue Lodges because the membership of all of our Blue Lodges come under one grotto mm -hmm. in our area. And uh, that opportunity to meet with, to shake hands with, to smile, trade stories, and uh, enjoy a very charitable happening uh, is ours to do. Mm -hmm. All right, here's a, here's a list of the 
different things. The Grotto is a Masonically affiliated fraternal organization. Its purpose is to cement the bonds of sympathy and good fellowship among its members called prophets. There are grottos throughout the United States and Canada. Each grotto is chartered by the Supreme Council Grottos of North America. For years, the grottos have been aiding the cerebral palsy child and now I identified with this new idea in dentistry for the handicapped. Okay, how, how does one go about uh, applying for dentistry or appliances for the handicapped through the grotto? The uh, beauty of that question is that all applications for the dentistry for the handicapped program must be referred to the executive secretary, uh, M-O-V-P-E-R, 1696 Bryce Road in Reynoldsburg, Ohio. That's 43068. That's the zip code. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a suburb of Columbus, Ohio. Uh, the request of the application would be uh, to that executive secretary. I would be uh, pleased to uh, offer my services to anyone that wishes additional communication and uh, I can be found uh, being addressed at uh, 279 Prospect Street in Brockton, mm -hmm. 02401, and under the name of Shedad Grotto, M-O-V-P-E-R. <laughs> My name is Carl W. Landerholm, by the way. Yeah. I think I mentioned that at the beginning you did. of the show. Yeah. But we just want to make sure we know who you are. Reinforce it. <laughs> Reinforce it. <laughs> But dentistry for the handicapped is one that uh, is near and dear to our hearts. Mm -hmm. And uh, if there's a child that needs help, we stand there. And it has no uh, attachment to uh, a Masonic family that has this difficulty. It's anyone. It's anyone. That's excellent. It is. It's something to be very proud of. And we are. Can you tell us some of the fun things that the, the Grotto has done in the past years? Oh, the past history is uh, luxurious with experience. I will sound perhaps like an old timer, appropriately so. The uh, one event that uh, was done every year, it was always in uh, May, was called a ceremonial when candidates would be presented to the uh, the walkover club with an opportunity to uh, witness the ritual. Previous to that, we would uh, gather in a parking lot at the uh, north side of the city of Brockton and assemble a parade that would start on Pleasant Street, go down Main Street, and it would generally uh, be participating with 250, 300 people marching units, bands. Uh, Tale of Grotto has a, uh, a marching band with uh, great flair. They have a color guard. We all had color guards as each grotto uh, wended its way down Main Street. And uh, part of the fun was uh, having the candidates all uh, tied together, not roped, but tied together in a, uh, a string. And there were 60, 65 sometimes walking this distance in a level of ridicule, in the best sense of fun, <laughs> uh, until such time as uh, we would get down to Camp Pello and the parade would be <coughs> easily uh, a half a mile long. Uh, the Blue Knights, uh, in this particular instance that I'm reciting, uh, were a motorcycle group, and uh, Jimmy Jamulis at Cape Cod Cafe uh, was a staunch advocate she dead grotto and he walked out from the cafe pointed to the fire engine where the candidates were all uh, gathered and told them to come through the front door he had put a beer in each one of their hands allowed them to walk out the back door and go back behind the fire engine and then we proceeded on to the walkover club uh, it was colorful and uh, never forgotten by those many times it didn't happen just once this was a uh, an annual occurrence and look forward to because it was colorful. We have a clown unit uh, that uh, was outstanding. And this competition between each of the grottos that uh, 
develop who can be the zaniest clown or the best decorated or the greatest number of clowns. So there's, there's a lot of uh, anticipation for the children. Uh, we would gather down finally at the walkover club, uh, perform the ceremonial, and then there would be a, uh, a dinner dance afterwards with the wives so that uh, it was a fun-filled day. And uh, it happened regularly. Uh, we also have ceremonials uh, in November, not with the same flair. Uh, it's obvious for weather, we do it kind of quietly. Mm -hmm. uh, in all of the years past, uh, each officer would choose a month uh, to run a party, and they always called it a theme party, whether it was St. Patrick's Day or Valentine's Day. Or in my case, my heritage is Swedish, so we had a Swedish night. And uh, we would fill the, uh, the hall with revelers who were there just to have a good time. And we always did. Pictures relate that kind of history now. That, uh, it was a fun time to be a part of. And to recite now to you that uh, fun times are still available. Uh, my wife and several members of SheDad traveled to last Friday night to uh, Taylor Grotto in Quincy, where they had a uh, entertainment, a dinner, and uh, had a wonderful time. And there were over 125 of us participating in this particular evening. And it's the fact that uh, folks will travel from uh, Dedham couple of couples came all the way from Springfield. That's a long ride. That's a long ride, and uh, they enjoy the fellowship. And that's a word that you heard me mm -hmm. repeat uh, numbers of times. And, and sympathy and good fellowship is a watchword, okay? But charity is our purpose. Okay? And when you have that purpose, it, it allows you to have an awful lot of fun and be very proud of what you're doing. It's not uh, taking, it's giving. Doing something that's for the community. That's right, and that's what masonry is. Uh, we're the participants that uh, work in society, and we try not to take from society. We, we do quite well at that. So what does it mean to me, a mason? It's something to be very proud of, and equally proud to be able to uh, float within the circles of our membership and bring joy and responsibility with a laugh, with a smile, with a great handshake. So have we accomplished something? Yes, we have. And uh, I would be pleased to talk with anybody who would like to hear our story. It's not my story. Mm -hmm. It's one that is of giving, charity. Uh, it's a wonderful feeling to know that you've meant a difference and made a difference. And that's where our tomorrows come from. So thank you for the opportunity. Remember he said the Grand Master was a, was a, uh, a grotto a member. Not only a member, he's the past Grand Monarch. Oh, is he? In 1986, he is currently the Grand Treasurer of the Grottos of North America. Uh, extremely responsible man, uh, very articulate, yeah. and being Treasurer, one, uh, in the best sense of the word, is prudent. <laughs> Thank you for appearing on our show. My it's pleasure. It's been nice to hear about the grotto. Thank and, you. And the work, the fine work that you do. A real pleasure. Thank you, Carl. Thank you.